Welcome back, we're here to preview Saturday afternoon's Premier League match between Aston Villa and Stoke. Barnes, two struggling sides, it will start with Villa last time out losing 3-2 at Liverpool. It was a really good game for the neutral, wasn't it? But again, another defeat for Villa, they need to start picking up points soon. There were positives to take from the match, I think the way they show fighting spirit going behind in the very first minute um, against Liverpool is never going to be an easy task to come back from that. But they stayed in the match, Rudy Castell got two good goals, that second the header in particular, you'd say Liverpool could have defended both a bit better, but the header, if they can keep putting balls of that quality into Gestead and have him in the box, then he's always going to get goals because he's so dominant in the air. And I think that's a tactic they need to employ a bit more often, but as we say, it is another defeat. They've only picked up one point since the opening day of the season now from a possible 18, and that was a home to Sunderland to a bottom of the table. So they need to improve a lot to, if they're going to stay in the division because they haven't been good enough so far. Sherwood knows that. He's been quite open about that, and he says staying up is the, the only objective now this season. And the way they started the campaign with the win against newly promoted Bournemouth, never an easy start to the season playing a newly promoted side. He would have got a bit of optimism, but since then it's just been disappointment after disappointment after disappointment. Three losses in a row now in the Premier League, and they need to find some points from somewhere quickly. Mm. So their, their form has been bad, but in terms of the news agenda, it's kind of been taken away from their bad form this week with the news that um, Jack Grealish has chosen to play for England over Ireland. And I think it's a bit odd the way that um, a lot of the stories have been written. He hasn't; he's not actually eligible for the latest set of games because that his um, international clearance wouldn't go through but the way some people are talking about it I think there's, it makes it sound like he's a shoe in for the squad which I think is just bizarre because he's still very young I don't think he's I wouldn't say he's a shoe in for the England squad at all but everyone seems to be saying now that he's chosen England you know he's going to be in this it seems to be that he's going to be in the squad straight away which I think is odd one because he's still very young he's shown flashes here and there that he can be a very bright player that goal against Leicester was a fantastic finish but for me he's certainly not ready to play international football yet and I think it's an interesting decision he chose to play for England because Ireland he represented them at several youth levels you know it seemed to be that was the country he'd chosen but maybe now he realises that he might be good enough to maybe play for England obviously a much more successful country and obviously do a lot better get to a lot more tournaments than Ireland do so an interesting decision but I certainly don't think he's necessarily ready for a senior England call-up yet. Yeah, he's perhaps not at the international level yet, is he? But there's no doubt in how important he is for Aston Villa when he's on form. And they're going to need him on form because they've got a tough run of fixtures coming up. They've got Chelsea, Swansea, Tottenham, Man City and Everton in the next five league games. And in between them, they've got Southampton in the League Cup as well. So it's a really tough run of fixtures coming up. This one is probably the most winnable of the lot of them and it's not an easy game either. So considering they haven't got many points on the board when they've had a few kind fixtures already, it's... It's really tough to see them getting away from the relegation zone in the coming few weeks. At home in particular, they've been poor, one point from nine. You'd say the losses to Manchester United and West Brom, they were quite narrow losses. Losing at home to West Brom 1-0, obviously Midlands rivals, that's a big that's a big disappointment. But Manchester United, again, they showed a bit of fight there. Drew to all with Sunderland, again, showed a bit of fight, got two goals and they've been struggling to score a bit. But to draw at home to Sunderland to a bottom of the table as we know yet to win a game this season again a disappointing result so they need to improve in that respect and the Swansea and Man City are the next two home league games after the international break so that that's going to be very tough for them to get points out of them as well yeah and I think the thing with the bottom half of the table this season it seems to be just quite even I think like there's a lot of teams from maybe sort of ninth down to 20th that you think they could finish in any order with those positions and I'd say apart from maybe Sunderland so far and Newcastle that everyone looks fairly even and Stoke are one of those teams and they actually got out at the bottom three last time out with that 2-1 win over Bournemouth and it, it was, certainly wasn't the best display you know Bournemouth lost their star player Callum Wilson in the first half which was obviously a big blow and then Stoke had to wait until the 83rd minute I think it was for Juve's header so it, it, a win's a win and it's always good to do that but I don't think it was the most convincing result John Walt was on the score sheet again he's been playing well recently but you know it, I think at this stage of the season, when you, when you had been struggling for wins, and a team like Stoke that were expected to be, you know, top half, you know, in the top half this season, for them to be in the bottom three after six games, it was disappointing. So just to get that first win off your back, I think that was the most important thing. Not necessarily the best performance, but they'll be wanting to kick on from that now. Yeah, they really needed a win, didn't they? Mark Hughes said after that, just to finally get that, they can start kick on from. It was a disappointing start to the season. He admitted that it was obviously a disappointing start after they spent so much money in what was a really good transfer window, including the League Cup now. They've got two wins on the bounce, so perhaps things are starting to move in the right direction. But I think they need to improve their away form because we mentioned Aston Villa's home form earlier, but Stoke haven't won an away game in the Premier League since February now, since their last trip to Villa Park, actually, which is eight games, four points from those 24. If they are to fulfil their pre-season ambitions of 
pushing for the top half, perhaps even pushing for Europe, which after their transfer window and with the squad they've got at their disposal, you'd suggest they might be able to do. They need to improve that away form at Villa Park, as we know, I've already mentioned their home form, that it's going to be a good place to try and get three points. And if they can, if they can win another game now, make it three in a row in all competitions, then perhaps they can start to get a bit of momentum. And they're, st- they're key players, the likes of Arnautovic, uh, Shakiri, Diouf, get a bit more confidence and they'll start moving up the table. I've got no doubt about that. But I think they, they could really do with a win here today. Yeah, and this game, 18th against 17th, pretty tough game to call. What's your prediction? Well, I, th- I think I'm going to go for a Stoke win. I think that victory last time out was, was an important one to get that weight off their back. I think Villa just, they were, they don't seem to be able to buy a win at the moment. They'll probably be fairly content with a draw here, the way things are going at the moment, even though they'll obviously be going for the win. But I think I'm going to go for Stoke to edge this one, 2-1. Two, 2-1. One. Two, one. I'm actually going to go the other way. I think it's such a tough game to call, and I think Villa, you know, losing 3-2 Anfield is not the worst result. Those two goals for Gestead, that'll give him confidence, and I think they might just edge this 1-0. So, got one Stoke win and a Villa win. Thanks for joining us.